talking about worry faith and the lord says um, you know verse 32 for after all these things the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things verse 33 but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you verse 34 therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is its own trouble um because we are just focusing on verse 33 seek first the kingdom of god um and its righteousness and a, a very important verse on priority and uh, this these verses just go on to say that uh, you know, worry actually causes a reorganizing of our priorities you know when we worry when we uh, when our mind is preoccupied um certain other things when we are unable to focus um we are uh, our mind we, we reorganize our priorities and the lord jesus is reminding us about uh, staying focused on uh, on 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 the priorities that uh, we have at hand um you know i, I was just reading something uh, yesterday uh, it, it it goes like this focus starts with elimination improves with concentration and compounds with continuation Okay, let me just read that again. Focus starts with elimination, which means we eliminate everything that's taking us away from what we should be focusing on. You know, what is our priority? So elimination. So focus starts with elimination, improves with concentration. So when we continue to concentrate on it, it improves. Our focus actually begins to, uh, you know, uh, begins to, we realize the strength of that focus. And it compounds, meaning it exponentially grows this focus with the continuation. You know, if we continue in it, if we are consistent in it, we actually experience um, a growth, exponential growth of focus. And the Lord is saying this, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, the righteousness of God, the rule and reign of God, and all these other things will be added. But um, worry, um, does not do anything except cause you to reorganize your priority um, or you know it causes you to um, re reorganize not in the right way not in the correct way uh, but really causes us to focus on things or take our mind off the things that we should actually focus on right so the lord jesus assurance is this uh, for, for your father knows that you need all things so go with the priorities go with the seeking him seeking his rule and reign over all things in our lives right okay let's pray father we we just want to thank you lord thank you for reminding us lord and bringing our uh, bringing our focus on to lord what really matters father god father we thank you that uh, you know our needs lord and you don't belittle them Lord, we thank you that uh, you know uh, the, the needs are legitimate, Lord. And uh, and Father God, we since you know, Father God, that you have need of these things, you also care enough to provide for these needs, Father God. And uh, whatever they might be, Lord, in whatever realm, Lord, physical, emotional, and spiritual, oh God. So, Lord, um, we uh, are in obedience to your word, Father God. We just invite your rule and reign, and we say, oh, Father God, we seek first your rule. We seek first your kingdom and your righteousness in all matters, in all things, God. And we know that, Lord, you will you will do the addition. You will do the restoration and bringing in, Lord, all these things that we are, uh, Lord, we might be worried about. And today we just reject worry in the name of Jesus. Uh, just go ahead and just reject, you know, uh, whatever is causing worry. Just reject it and refuse to refuse to worry just stand firm on faith stand firm the reassurance of the words of jesus reassurance based on his character and nature and and his word to us uh, let's choose to be anchored upon it and then say you know uh, i will not worry i choose not to worry i choose not to be preoccupied with things um, that will not benefit and so I choose to focus on God. Yes, Lord, you said, O oh God, that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Lord, enable us to be <clears throat> stayed on you, Father God, that our minds be stayed on you and uh, that you will keep us in that place of shalom, shalom. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We just give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. 
Oh, man. man. Okay, so um, picking up from where we left off, we've been looking at um, nurturing relationships, right? The, um, we see that uh, uh, relationships need our time, our energy, uh, our, our abilities, our relationships uh, require that. And uh, um, I think that's where we stop. We kind of you know, have a, had one introduction, and then we said, OK, let's um, we look at what else is required to nurture a relationship. You know, some of these things, we, we've done it. And uh, when we were growing up, we've, we've nurtured. We spent time. We spent uh, you know, um, uh, uh, investing in each other's lives, even without knowing it. If you look at some of our friendships, see those common things of uh, of uh, time spent, of uh, uh, doing good things to others, of uh, sharing one's life, um, etc. You know, confiding um, and, and all those things, helping one another. So we so see all these common traits, and then it becomes difficult when we are when we are actually adults, and when we need to do this intentionally. You know, whether it's a mentoring kind of a relationship or a or a, you know, a work kind of a setting um, or a ministry setting, right? Um, but this is something as leaders we need to understand that uh, relationships are not automatic relationships need nurture okay so uh, so let's look at uh, four things uh, four four principles that john c john c maxwell talks about in winning with people uh, he talks about how we need to nurture okay so the thing is to uh, the first principle that he talks about is the gardening principle like how a garden uh, needs nurture, a garden needs uh, work, a garden needs uh, protection, uh, and and so on. So um, a garden uh, does not uh, happen automatically. You know, the next time we see, you know, you see a good garden, you see, you know, plants thriving, you realize that uh, a, a lot of work has gone into it, right? A lot of careful attention to detail has gone into it um, you know there have been times that are watering and and you know I'm not a garden gardening person uh, but my wife is right but um, so I don't really understand uh, now I'm beginning to learn to understand all that goes into it you know there's some planting there's some repotting there's some you know a whole lot of things I think those of you who are gardening enthusiasts will understand that right that uh, uh, with some weeding happening some you know, all those things. Um, so you see that in a garden, uh, a simple thing like a garden requires all that. Requires, in other words, we need to cultivate. Okay, so relationships need to be cultivated. Okay, so we we understand the word cultivate about the effort that goes in. Okay, um, so some questions that we can ask ourselves is, uh, you know, am I cultivating? what is required in a relationship, right? You know, so we're talking about uh, relationships in general, but as, uh, you know, when we talk about relationships, just keep in mind uh, the focus on, uh, you know, as a, maybe a spiritual leader um, and, and, and uh, the emphasis to be on that, right? So, um, well, uh, the question we need to ask is, you know, is, is this a continual part of my life or do I, do this uh, sporadically and is that why i'm not seeing results right i'm not seeing this attraction um traction with people right so um so let's just uh, you know ask ourselves that that question you know uh, am i cultivating am i uh, uh, really investing the word is investing you know when you invest there is a return okay so uh, the thing is this that we cannot neglect okay a relationship and have this expectation that it will somehow grow flourish right okay we cannot neglect it and then have the expectation opposite of it right? um we need uh, we need to do the opposite of neglect in the sense we need to give attention right? we give attention and do the right things you know it doesn't cultivate means 
taking off what is unnecessary, right? What is unhealthy, what is toxic, removal of that. Cultivate is to bring in what is healthy, right? To add on what is healthy. Um, so it, it 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 is both both of that, right? So we cannot neglect this aspect of bringing in certain things or even removal of what is unhealthy in a relationship and expect that somehow this will grow right this will thrive so if you talk about maybe a team if you're talking about um, uh, even individuals if you're talking about you know church uh, we need to cultivate and it becomes um, more and more difficult when when the when there are there's a big number, right? And so the thing is, we're not expected. We're going to look at that. You know, we're not expected to uh, just spread ourselves thin and uh, you know, um, and do this kind of investing with each and every person. You know? So, for the simple reason that all relationships are not the same. Okay, we understand that, right? Even even if it's a uh, you know, in a in a simple setting like a, maybe a church setting, a small church setting, we see that there is. Uh, we've talked about it. There is that core, the leaders, the leaders who are part of the core, and uh, maybe a commit. Uh, then we have a few people outside of that core uh, who are committed. Right, they they are not part of the core. They can actually move into the core over a period of time. Um, then you have. Uh, then you have the community who are you know regularly connected and a part of uh, part of the gathering you know, we are looking at an example of a church of course uh, and then we would say what we could call as the crowd right they are now the challenge in a, in a church is to move right Const constantly keep moving uh, from the crowd to the community to the uh, committed to the core, right? So we have this now. In that kind of a setting, setting, you know, we're not going to be, uh, let's say, the the pastor or the a core leader is cannot really invest in everybody, right? So that goes on to say that all the relationships are not the same. Okay, if you look at the life of the Lord Jesus. Well, there were Peter, James, and John. Uh, Peter and John who were with him. And uh, we read about them. And then we read about the 12. And we read about the, you know, the others, the 120 and so on. So we see that the time spent, the kind of interaction that the Lord had with, um, with each of them in his earthly ministry was different. Right? And now, of course, we have the privilege of having the Holy Spirit with us. Um, he's with us, and we have that one-on-one. -on -one. But we cannot do that, uh, that one-on-one -on -one with each and every person. Okay, So all relationships are not the same. And uh, also, all relationships do not need the same quantum of time or the same quality of attention. Okay. Uh, we need to understand that. I think that will really uh, enable us to conserve strength, um, to reprioritize our time and effort. Right? So, um, so we need to understand all relationships. Do, all relationships do not need the same kind of time and same kind of attention, and it helps to keep that that picture in mind: the core, the committed community the crowd in a formal setting but if you look at our own lives individually um, all relationships do not need that same kind of time and attention and we have you know if you're married you have your spouse and and then we have you know others in the family then we have the extended family then we have you know other friendships uh, maybe you know uh, uh, from the spouse um, uh, that immediate family you could have other friends or you know that kind of uh, overlap sometimes and that also creates problems right then we have the extended family then we have 
you know colleagues and and others who are there right so um now if we are going to give you know, if we don't don't give the right amount of time and attention for uh, uh, for the ones who are close to us and if we kind of reverse that flip that um, that is not going to be helpful okay so uh, if uh, you know, John C. Maxwell actually talks about a couple of things. He says, you know, relationships happen for a reason. Okay, reason meaning, you know, there could be, um, let's say, we could have a assignment, a short project. Um, you know, for example, uh, I'm just thinking about, uh, you know, as a uh, as a teaching minister, as part of the ministry, uh, we, we we have we had what it, what is called as uh, the short term Bible colleges, a short term Bible course, and this is typically you know over a period of uh, and we we're going to have that pretty soon in uh, in Bangalore as well. So it's a typically two and a half months, ten weeks, right? Where as teachers, you know, we go, we invest, uh, and it's for a period of a week or five days of teaching, five or six days. Um, teaching and then we get back. So now that's an intense time where there's a lot of investment of time and uh, uh, and also um, you know in relations relationally you know we're spending time with people uh, answering questions. Now that's for a short time. So it happens for a reason. It is a it could be an assignment, a short term project, uh, or it could be because of a need. Like you know you are uh, you know. Maybe uh, um, you know you visiting a doctor, or uh, you know uh, someone you know you're taking counsel from, and it's it's for a reason, right? So when we talk about those kind of relationships, there are factors like time and attention and everything. The second thing is it could happen for a season. Okay? We need to be aware of that also. You know. Uh, well, here we are, online class, and uh, you know, we've been kind of journeying for the last two years, and maybe one more year. Some of us, you know, and some of us might decide, okay, two years is fine. I'm happy with the diploma kind of thing, or I might continue in another format, uh, e-learning. That's fine. You know, it happens uh, for a season, okay, and uh, spending this time, right? But some relationships are for a lifetime, okay. So. Those three things, you know, it happens for a reason. It could be for a kind of season, and uh, it could be for a lifetime. So we need to really understand, okay, what is the nature of relationship, and uh, that will require. You know, once we understand, so the, so the question is, you know, so how do I, uh, how do I, you know, identify it? How do I know? Right? What what if this, uh, you know, this goes beyond? Uh, a season. Let me just put this here. Um, okay, so it could be for a season, or a, could have a particular reason for that, you know, uh, relationship, and and so on. Yeah. So, so what if? How do I know? Well, uh, we we need to ask that. We need to ask ourselves that question. We need to use our judgment. Uh, you know, where does it fit in? You know, where does it slow? Uh, and and it, there's no one answer. There's no you know uh, one formula. Uh, it's a, it's a case by case thing. How did you know Paul? You know, out of all those people, out of all those young men there, uh, uh, you know, in uh, uh, where he met Timothy, right? uh, Lystra, Derby, and uh, you know the Twin Cities, where he met. So I'm sure there must have been many. But why is it that? There was this connect you know, with Timothy, right? Obviously, God ordained, uh, and also um, Paul was sensitive and obedient, and he saw something, uh, he discerned something, and he tells Timothy, you know, that that, and obviously he knew the family, so many things, but it uh, it ended up in Paul really pouring out his life into Timothy. Um, and also Titus and all the others who went on to, you know, and they journeyed on for, it was not just for a season, it was for a lifetime, all keeping in touch and writing and investing and uh, and encouraging in, in the ministry 
even even beyond the you know the physical meetings right so we see that happening so um well the quest, question is okay uh, how do i do that do that so various um, uh, various factors uh, again um so we, we need to be mindful okay um so <clears throat> if it's what are those that are there for a lifetime well obviously um your spouse uh, and uh, or spouse to be whatever you know the thing is that uh, marriage commitment okay the covenant um requires again it it, it uh, shifts that uh, relationship it brings it into perspective that it is not just a short term thing that it requires uh, cultivation again right it requires time requires effort it's um, doesn't just happen automatic so so if you're looking at you know these lifetime relationships um, which are maybe a mentoring kind of relationship and definitely your spouse and, and other friendships and um, this requires right uh, continual let me use the word continual cultivation okay um otherwise uh, we may not realize it but there's some kind of you know the shriveling up some kind of withering that will happen right so um it's uh, is is it uh, is it easy no it's not this also goes through seasons uh in our in our lives and it's it's not it's not easy it, it requires because there are a whole whole lot of things crowding in you know that's the thing the whole lot of uh, activities a whole lot of responsibilities right crowding in and trying to take that place right constantly it's like one list that's uh, you know to do list what is the first up you know uh, just constantly shifting changing right um, but it's uh, but it's important Okay, so um, so that's uh, that's the thing, right? So uh, you know, how do I do it? Okay, that's the other thing. You know, how how do I cultivate uh, something that's healthy, something that's ongoing, um, and uh, and obviously the first thing that we can we can mention what will really help uh, cultivate a relationship is commitment. Okay, we are talking about a long term. Uh, and important relationships that matter. Um, commitment is required. Without commitment, um, there cannot be, without commitment as a foundation, we are you're committed to the relationship. Um, you know, I'm talking about marriage. Um, a deep commitment is, is required, right? Then this commitment, you know, while we say that it's there for marriage relationship, it is also, you know, true in other, deep long-term relationships right so without commitment it's going to fizzle out okay um so some questions to ask okay so um you know when you think of a marriage relationship and when you think of a typical wedding that happens and the wow uh, wow that happens uh, exchanged what is that wow about it's about commitment right it's about commitment it's about commitment when things are fine. It's about commitment when the materially things are not okay. It's about commitment when you know there are ups and downs, you know, with regard to health, finances, uh, everything. So different seasons. So a, a, a typical wedding or marriage wow is is like that, right? Spanning all that, spanning the course of time, uh, you know the. The typical um, the wow ends like till death the worst part. So that that's you know, that's a that's a long term thing, uh, and it talks about commitment through and through. Right? Commitment when things are okay, when things are great. Commitment when things are not okay. So that's commitment. So the question to ask is, you know, um, you know how committed are we when things are bad, when things are not so good? How committed are we to maintain? the relationship okay um commitment also we know does not mean that we avoid conflict or um when we are committed in a particular uh, relationship it doesn't mean that uh, there, there is 
no, it's 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 not going to have any conflicts, but it also means that how committed are we to walk through uh, those conflicts, or talk about it and settle and uh, find solutions for those conflicts, right? So uh, it talks about that the commitment and the commitment also um, it means um, uh, it means the the course of time. It's not just today and tomorrow and uh, maybe just a year from now, it is long term. So, right? so that's comm commitment. Um, yeah, let me just put that here. Yeah. Okay. Commitment. The second thing that uh, uh, that will really help um, the relationship to thrive, help us to cultivate, is communication. Okay, something very basic. Uh, it's communication. Communication is not dumping. You know, all our thoughts or emotions on one person, you know, constantly talking. Well, it's not that communication is two way. Communication is understanding and being understood, right? So, um, so communication is uh, being transparent, being open, and and with the objective of understanding the person, with the objective of sharing. Uh, what needs to be shared, and also with the objective of uh, you know uh, not just us being understood, but us understanding the other person. Okay. So there's a lot of information. There's a lot of uh, uh, you know at the, it, 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 at a superficial level. You know, it's just ex it could be exchange of facts and information, and. Uh, you know, uh, and also um, it could be some things that are um, well, the, some things that are uh, that do, does not involve emotions, maybe. But then, uh, uh, communication at a deeper level would involve uh, thoughts, desires, uh, opinions, plans, ambitions, and so on. Right. So uh, it deepens. It also, surprisingly, it deepens communication. Uh, it, it deepens when we have difficult communication, or, or the the level of relationship deepens when we have difficult communication. Right? Sometimes we avoid difficult communication, uh, or communicating about difficult things, uh, communicating about things that are, you know, that are probably wrong with us or with the other person. But then. And we have the difficult communications and conversations that also uh, helps deepen the relationship. Okay, um, the common said it is impossible to learn anything important about anyone until we get him or her to disagree with us. Right? Uh, it is only in contradiction that character is disclosed. You know, well, we yeah, we definitely you know there is power in agreement. Uh, how can like Amos three three? You know, we read, how can two walk together unless they are in agreement, right? So definitely there's progress and there's agreement. But also when in disagreement, we really understand the person and right? understand where the other person is uh, uh, coming from, why, you know, you, why the person believes what they believe, right? Okay, so communication, it, uh, it really helps. The third thing is, uh, okay, so communication, um, And the third thing is um, this friendship, right? So, um, you know, are, are we really, uh, you know, I, I know that this is not possible in all kinds of relationship, like in, in all, um, in the different kinds of, like, for example, if it's a typical work setting um, and, uh, you know, it, it is not, it is not possible, like right? there is a formal um, kind of a relationship. And uh, and therefore, uh, well, uh, we we can't really typically be like uh, you know backslapping friends. Right? There are there are certain norms, and then we keep to it, and that's it. Right? But the but the thing is, we're talking about other relationships which require time investment, and therefore, um, this aspect of friendship. Right? Um, so uh, just being friends, just being 
concerned about others' needs. Um, so trying to do anything else. Like this whole aspect of friendship is very, very important. Okay, you can have all the other things, you can have, uh, you know, uh, commit, you can be committed, etc. But then, if you are not uh, being a friend to that person, being concerned about their welfare, putting them first, and so on, so then, you know, then it, it does not, it misses a very important uh, factor ingredient. Okay. Um, then another thing is also uh, shared memories. Okay, shared memories uh, really help the relationships thrive. Okay, when you say shared memories, it's also some um, well difficult things when we have gone, what we have gone through. You know, some ups and downs that we have gone through together. So these are shared memories, which means that we have solved problems together, faced difficulties together, faced challenges together, uh, and also you know celebrated things together. Right, so you can you can think of you know a, a, let's say a, a core leadership ministry team you can think of um, mentor mentee a mentee kind of a relationship. You can think of you know spouse, husband wife, um, and and close knit family and all that. You know the, there are sh the the shared memories help the relationship thrive. Okay. So we are. What are we studying? We're talking, we're talking about the gardening principle. We're talking about winning with people and how a relationship needs to be cultivated. So these shared memories really help the relationship to to thrive. Right? Um, definitely, you know, it, it's a point of connect. Right? Um, if you if you go to uh, to uh, maybe your your high school reunion or college reunion, you know, uh, what really instantly connects us uh, are these shared memories, you know, and that's what we talk about, right? You know, you remember this happened, you remember, I remember, you know, we were going back to our um, high school uh, reunion, and uh, this was, I think, uh, maybe 25, 25, 25 years after graduation. So we all met, of course, everyone was looking much different, gray hair, you know, <laughs> Uh, guys who were thin were fat, guys who were fat were thin, and all you know, very, very different. Um, and uh, and what really you know, uh, caused us to connect with these shared memories. And uh, I remember some of these things which happened somebody actually burst a cracker in the, in the classroom, right? And uh, this is one of our. Uh, one of our batches, um, and I, I forget it, it was, I think it was a commerce batch or computer science. So they, um, they, uh, the entire class was punished, right? And uh, till date, we don't know who did it. <laughs> the class was so, I don't know, so supportive of one another, they wouldn't let out. Uh, so they were, they were actually punished for quite some time. I remember, you know, I think a few weeks. Uh, and that particular subject, they were they were asked to, uh, you know, stand up and some some kind of punishment, some 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 sort of was there happening, but uh, they wouldn't. So we were talking about that uh, when we had the reunion. The fact that till date, uh, nobody knows, right? And nobody actually. Um, also, the ones who knew also did not let on. Uh, so so things like that really help. The relationship to thrive. Okay. So these shared memories need not always, um, uh, you know, when we say memory, it's something that has already happened, right? So what will really cultivate the relationship is if we would, if we would journey together and, uh, you know, make new memories. In the sense, uh, it could be. Uh, it could be something uh, that we're doing during leisure time, or you, uh, or a trip, or uh, some kind of an event, or things that we do together, right? Uh, it could be an outreach. It could be, um, you know, uh, the time after an outreach. Uh, it could be, it could be the time spent preparing for for an uh, an outreach. I'm just saying, you know, ministry setting, different kinds of trying to think of different kinds of settings where we have these shared memories like for a for a team ministry team maybe maybe uh, the the times of uh, you know, 
for a worship team it could be a time of practice and, and what happens so that is also a shared memory what some something significant happening something special happening and what happens after that and the time spent together so these are all shared memories so these shared memories um, definitely uh, help us um, when we when we talk about that and we look back and when we uh, journey forward this helps the relationship to thrive right so to create this memory. so as families also it would it would really help us um, to to do stuff together you know to to so that the children so that as um, as a spouse you you are able to look back and say uh, because time just time just goes by you know before you know it you just a decade slips by right so it's good to keep do this intention intentionally right again to think about you know maybe you're ahead of the family and uh, maybe you're you know your your spouse so think of it and say what will create these memories right and and do that okay and um, i would say that even these uh, you know not so good things that happen um, these are also shared memories right um, well some of those difficult times some of those uh, challenging times that you had to navigate through you know some of the storms of life and how you actually handled it and and together you faced it and you know these are also shared memories right? um, these are memorable in the sense um, you can't forget those things and uh, maybe going through that time it was very difficult right but having negotiated and having weathered that storm that storm itself is a shared memory right you look back and uh, even that enables us to you know some some things that you've learned that we faced it that um, that we were able to depend on god's grace and we face things together we experience the grace of god we experience the supernatural hand of god and all that helps the relationship to thrive okay okay uh, so friendship and then we looked at uh, uh, shared memories um, then uh, the other thing that uh, helps the, the relationship thrive is is um, is just growth itself is when the relationship thrives and the relationship grows it's not stagnant but it's it's growing okay so uh, when we do these things uh, the relationship of course grows um, so the growth of the relationship itself you're growing so when we say uh, the you know growing it's growing in understanding it's growing in uh, in, in maturing together it is uh, uh, well, it's uh, well. We could say growing in Christ-likeness, growing in um, in knowledge. Uh, you know, if it is a, if it's a, growing in skill. Right? If it is a a, a ministry team, um, so growing in all these aspects. Right? There's individually we are growing, and collectively we are growing. Right? Uh, just looking at, excuse me, um, like how the. Uh, church has grown uh, looking at some of these churches that have grown and growing in the understanding and I remember the, uh, you know, at a time when we just learning about some things some of the basics the foundations of uh, the supernatural right? the foundations of the prophetic foundations of hearing God's, God's voice and learning to do that and I remember some of those times when, when the people who, who were there and for us it was a it was a new thing right it was it was something that we were uh, you know kind of freshly exposed to and it was it was all a new thing and uh, and how each of us journeyed individually and collectively uh, in that right and uh, and how it becomes uh, it comes to another level altogether and how we grow together in that so that also impacts uh, impacts the conversation impacts the kind of um you know uh, are the the dynamics of the relationship like growth okay. and lastly uh, what would really help is that uh, um, 
is sometimes you know just pampering or uh, you know, spoiling one another uh, with uh, or lavishing you know a, 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 um, concern or love uh, let's say pamper spoil I'm using the words within quotes spoil okay um, really going out of the way being extravagant lavishing gift maybe surprising you know that um, these are things that really you know help um, one another. You know, random acts of kindness, right? Which uh, it could be a you know gifting, it could be our time, just showing up, and all these things, small things, really help uh, the relationship to thrive. So the thing is this: that um, uh, if we cannot cultivate, right, we cannot sustain. Okay. So over a period of time, there seems to be, you know, if we don't do this, there seems to be distance, there seems to be misunderstanding, there seems to be kind of emotional distance, right? Yeah, even though we could be in the same place, we could be in the same house, in the same home, uh, living in the same place, but there seems to be distance. Why? Because this kind of a cultivation did not happen. Right? This investment did not happen. So uh, seem to be two different people right? uh, without understanding and seem to be like strangers uh, in the same place because we did not invest. Okay? So we can actually ask ourselves a question, okay, who are the way who are the people who require this kind of investment in my life? Right. In terms of time, in terms of uh, energy, and, uh, who are the people who require? Of course, your spouse, your family, and who others? Who who are the others? Um, and also to ask ourselves the question: you know, this, you know, this relationship, is it for a reason? Like, is it a you know a special assignment uh, kind of a thing? Is it a project? So that doesn't require. This kind of investment, right? Um, this doesn't require this kind of time and effort. We need to understand that, right? Uh, or you know, is is there something for a particular season? Maybe it's uh, for a time period. It's for a season. Then yes, right. But you understand that it's 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 going to be for a season. Sometimes we have that understanding. Sometimes we we may not, right? And um, so uh, having that understanding helps. Okay, It's good. It's for a season. It's fine. Um, so you're not disappointed. Right? It could be a professional kind of a thing that's happening, professional work relationship, ministry, and, you rec and, you, and you're, you're not disappointed. Okay, maybe, you know, like a, you know, sometimes, um, you know, uh, maybe in a church setting, we have people who are, you know, there and uh, planted there for a season. Right, it's it's for a season, and then they discover their calling, their gifting, um, they get equipped, and uh, and then it's time for them to move on. Okay, and it's time for us to let go. Right, so it was there for a season, and then we invested, like poured out, invested, but now that season is over, and then you know it, it's it's the it's it's like the Lord commissioning them for something else, something bigger that they have grown into. And uh, we understand that, and then we are not disappointed. We are actually happy, rejoicing, celebrating that it's a it's a it's a new season for them, right? So uh, it it actually uh, uh, prevents us from being disappointed and hurt and so on, right? You, when you understand the season, and of course to know that okay, is it a is it a thing where is it a is it a kind of a relationship where it's it's long term, it's lifetime, then. Then we understand. Okay, um, okay, this is going. This is significant, and so it's important. It requires this kind of cultivation. It requires this kind of time, uh, and so on. So, yeah. So uh, we'll stop here, and we'll uh, take a break. Um, yeah. Any questions? Any questions here? Okay. Okay. 
Fine. So I think uh, you know, even as we were hearing this, um, so we can think of you know c certain scenarios in our own lives where you know you wish, okay, I wish I had you know kind of invested, uh, or, or wish I'd someone else invested had invested in me. Um, and we also think of you know, so so the thing is um, to do some course corrections, right? Uh, when we realize that okay, this is how we, um, this is how things can drift, and this is how things can actually um you know grow so you know we make those course corrections and see okay what are the steps that i can do okay um okay so i uh what, what some of the i think one question that um that's very common i don't know uh, and nobody asked but what if the other person um uh, does not receive all that investment and time and you know doesn't value you know, i don't know do you, does someone have a question like that or does someone have an answer for that answer i don't know but <laughs> question <laughs> yeah yeah the thing is you know you you because you you realize that okay um then obviously there's this conflict right because obviously there is uh, there is misunderstanding and there's a potential for whoever's investing pouring out uh, their time and effort for the potential for them to be hurt, right? Disappointed, uh, thinking, oh, you know, why is uh, why is this reciprocation not happening? That that poten that thing is always there. Okay, so that is why it requires uh, you know setting up expectations. Uh, understanding uh, from both ends, right, and and that's why in a marriage we have this expectation set, right, and uh, like you know, that's why it's very important to understand, you know, like I'm just talking typically about marriage, okay, right? we need to have an understanding. This is what it is. This is what the Bible says. This is the expectation. This is the role. This is the responsibility, and uh, and move forward in that. Now. Well, uh, some sometimes it's uh, it's not set. It's it's very fluid. It's very you know, if it's a work kind of a setting, it can be set. Even in a in a in a marriage, uh, it can be set because of what we do in premarital you know uh, uh, premarital courses and so on. It can be set, but in some cases it is not. And one person wants to the other person does not then it becomes a you know thing so it's it always goes back to having that discussion okay having that expectation um or at least communicating that and saying okay you know this is what we can look at this we can look at an objective no not relationship for the sake of relationship but you know this is what you know, different scenarios right this is what uh, we are here for, and this is what God wants, and uh, and we can do this, and uh, you know all these uh, maybe uh, communication and at the at, at the foundation the, the commitment itself, and uh, hopefully things will change from the other person also, right? When there is this communication, when there is this friendship, uh, you know things could change with the other person also but there is there needs to be this communication of expectation right. okay we'll uh, we'll stop here and then we'll uh, we'll get back after the break